I want to preach, continue my teaching on altar versus altar part three. Say amen. And uh, I want to read a very familiar text in the book of Judges, chapter number six. And I'm reading from verse number one. It's quite uh, distant in the scriptures. But let's read it and, go and get the full import of that scripture. And the children of Israel, Judges 6 verse 1, and the children of Israel uh, did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years, and the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dance which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And it was so, when Israel, take note, when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep nor ox nor ass, for they came up with their cattle, their tents, and they came up as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The scriptures were very clear. The Israelites, after they have been brought, after they were brought down from Egypt, the Lord said to them, do not do after the abomination of the nations that you have conquered. Do not bow down to their images. Do not bow down to their gods. Don't worship them. Don't serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers to the first, second, third, and fourth generation of them that hate them. Say amen. So the instructions were very clear. But at a point, the Israelis now started worshiping Baal, started flirting with the other nations, marrying their wives, pouring all kinds of things, and serving the gods of the Amorites and whatever. And the Lord gave them up. Say amen. You see, God is a very jealous. Like the way we come to church and you kneel at the altar, you worship, lifting your hands and everything, you know. God wants to receive that worship alone. He doesn't want you to go and bow down to anything else or worship anything else. He said, I'm a jealous God. This is the only area of God. He said, I'm a jealous God. I don't want to share my glory with nobody. But the Israelites went. Say amen. You see, that is one of the reasons, that is one of the problems we have in this country. We are a very blessed country. Blessed, oh my God, blessed. And yet, we are suffering. It is a castle. And so come to you. Say amen. It's not, it's not my coat, it's somebody's coat. Oh. We have gold, we have timber, we have bauxite, we have manganese, we have oil, we have diamond, we have timber, we have cocoa, we have coffee, we have cashew, we have lands, we have fertile soil, and yet our economy is tight. It is sick it means that something has gone wrong somewhere. It means that we have given our worship to something else. It means 
means that it means that we are torn between two opinions. Say amen. And we need to return to God as a nation. Am I talking to somebody here? Because still in our homes, in our villages, we are still worshiping trees and rivers and, and, and gods and, and images. We are still pouring all kinds of libations on national days. We are doing what we call Futu Futu 11. We mix. When the Americans are going to swear in or they have their independence, they, they have one prayer. That's it. We will have all kinds of prayers. Those things hurt God. It offends him. When we are sharing his glory with other gods. Uh, I have to speak for God. I have to speak for him. He can't speak for himself. Say amen. And when you narrow it down also to our individual lives, it also goes the same way. There are people in our church who are still in steep in all kinds of uh, demonic religious practices. Yes. And I'll keep on saying it. It, is, it offends God when you come here and kneel at his altar and lift your two hands and worship and go to your village and go and kneel down to another God. It offends God. It hurts him. It means that you are sharing his glory with another tree or a river or something else. You cannot do that. Sometimes you don't know where your problems and your woes are coming from. It's because you are torn between two opinions. You are in church and still you are, you are, you, 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 you are paying allegiance to a river somewhere. Another God. Festivals. We should see you in your festivals in your village. We will recognize you. We will not recognize you. The way some uh, you are shaking. You, it doesn't shake here. You are shaking in your village. And you have carried your children, and they are carrying water with, uh, with leaves, and they are shaking. And your children are walking in the village half naked in the names of rituals. It offends God, it hurts His glory because. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. How come today you are paying allegiance to a tree, a river, an image that doesn't move or talk? It offends God. And if you are in my church here and you are into those things, I command you to come out of them and be separated and touch not the unclean thing. That the Lord will save you. Yes. I have to speak for God. You cannot. And I don't, I don't really care what is happening in your village. You cannot carry your family to go and bow down to a tree or a river or do uh, some rites whatever right and then your children they are swallowing three eggs and then they are sitting on the stool and they are dancing and their breasts are shaking for the whole world to know that I'm, I'm ripe for, for a lot of nonsense <laughs> see amen you cannot give birth to a child and perform rites on that child afterwards carry the baby to this altar you cannot do you, 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 you cannot do that you cannot pour libation put uh, charcoal put uh, 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 whatever the matter of child bring people bow down carry the child put him uh, in the, and then throw water in the zingli and then the zingli will roll the water over your child it's, it's, it's absolutely nonsense with no apologies. 
When God gives you a baby, bring the baby to church. And dedicate the baby to God. After dedicating the baby to God, you don't have to dedicate the baby to anything else. You don't have to call elders of your village. Either you see, choose the two you want to do. Either you give the baby to the elders of your village and stay there and let your baby remain there. And then come to church, go and come and sit there and take communion and, and, and see where you will go. But you cannot give the baby to God and still go and give the baby to something else. I do not share my glory with another. So the situation of Israel was as a result of the evil they did against God. So their sustenance were taken away. The Midianites and Amalekites came and took over all their economy. The economy went down. Everything went down. Until they cried unto God. And when they cried unto God, God showed them the reason why they are so impoverished. It was because they have gone to serve other gods. See, amen. And it was so, verse 3, when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass, for they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude for both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it and Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried against God. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm fighting for God that he is the only wise, only true God. There are no two ways to the Lord. Say amen. Verse 7, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. We said unto them, thou sayest the Lord God of Israel, I brought you out from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppress you and drove them out of before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Are you following? And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was, at, which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abizarite. And his son Gideon dressed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto, unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles? which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Before, behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto you, surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord diagnosed the problem and sent Gideon. There is a Gideon here who must save his family. Say amen. 
There is somebody that is always a remnant, a person, somebody who has become a child of God, born again, who is like the Gideon of the family. To save the family, to save your village, to save your people. Say amen. And the Bible said, the Lord told him that your fathers have erected an altar and they have sacrificed. They have erected an altar and they have sacrificed upon it. You see, because of that, God withdraws himself because now you guys are bowing down to two altars. So once you were bowing down to the altar of Baal, God took himself out. Therefore, a very powerful nation was thrown into chaos. Say amen. So he told Joshua, for me to deliver Israel, you have to pull down the altars of your fathers. Last two weeks, we talk about Elijah repairing the altar. This one does not need repair. It means it, it requires a pulling down. There are some altars you don't repair. You don't repair a demonic altar. You destroy it. You remove it. You take it away. You, it means that you remove yourself totally from it. Look at the powerful men of God who were assembled yesterday and they were blessing Selassie and Joshua. Is it Joshua? Yeah. Then after this ceremony, then Joshua carries Selassie to the village. Where, which village do you come from? Huh? Daban. Where is it? Kumasi. Then you carry Selassie to Daban to go and now bow before something else. After they have blessed you here, after they have laid hands on you, powerful men of God have traveled around the world and have laid hands on you. Then you carry the marriage to Daban to a fetish that you should also add his blessing. Is that possible? That is why I don't believe people who go and marry, go and do Akpeteshi marriage. After when you come to church, that the pastor should bless the appetition marriage. It doesn't work like that. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Pull down that demonic order. Pull it down. Destroy it. And the groove that is by it, he told it. He said, Pull it down. Look, look, look at the scripture. Verse number what? Verse 25. And it came to pass. In the, uh, in, the, in the same night that the Lord said unto him take thy father's young bullock even the second bullock of seven years and, old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had and cut down the groove by it and build an altar unto the Lord that thy God that upon the top of this rock and other them. You see, in other words don't repair Something that is demonic. Don't repair it. In the Elijah case, he said, repair the altar. But in the case of Gideon, pull down the altar. There are certain things you have in your homes, certain beads, carries, some things that your, your grandmother gave to you that anytime you are going to work, shake it seven times, some things you are drinking, throw them away. There are certain beads you are wearing. Make sure it's a godly, it's a godly something you are wearing. Otherwise, uh, remove it and throw it away. You don't repair such things. 
There are certain things you are swallowing. There are certain things you are doing in your home. There are some rituals you are following. Tuesdays, you, you turn around three times and you come out of your house backwards. It's nonsensical. Throw it down. In your own house, you are turning around. On Wednesdays, we don't eat meat. On Tuesdays, we don't eat fish. On Fridays, we jump seven times. That is the way it has been with my grandfather. Throw it down. Pull all these rituals. Throw them away. What your grandmother has given you, you are keeping certain objects of contact among your things. Given to you by your grandmother. Throw them away. It's a point of contact. That is why you are having demonic dreams. Because there is a fit, there is a Trojan horse in your house. There is a fit column. There is something connecting your hope to the demonic world because of that object that your mother gave you. Because of that pot, something. They say, eh, sir, kukwe wedi, kukwe wedi, fesi bukasi, men fe, men, men shem, da, men shem, de biya men si ho, men si ho, na your friend is say, men si ho, inti e si huwa besi ne, e si huwa besi ne. It's a point of contact. There is a Trojan horse, there is a Trojan horse in your house, there is a fit column, there is an enemy within. Honestly, that is why things are not going well. That is why whatever. So you are a little, a little bit of God, a little bit of the pot, a little bit of God, a little bit of the pot, and you are confused. confused. <laughs> Coins and it never actually read, actually, uh, how do you call it? How you call it a rag? A red rag is what? In tobacco. What did I say? A pukoko. Yeah, Randy Boabi. In tobacco. For coins, 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 coins. A do. For chichiri. For chichiri. In tobacco. Now for shekuku onimu. Now for we are. Pensan. Pensan. For gusu. And in su. And in bidye. Now the bidye gusu. Ne jina hosa. Be ye temeni. Na dan dan hom yensa. Nonsense. You are a Christian. You are what? A Christian. Pull down that altar. That thing sitting in your house is an altar. The thing you are sacrificing upon it is an altar. Are you a Christian? You say you can belong to only two things. You, either you belong to whatever or you belong to the, you are a child of God. You cannot repair that thing. The pot cannot be repaired. The pot must, if you can't pull down, call us. We'll come to your house and carry it and throw it away. Anything you, anything you revere carries a spirit behind it. You, you know you can create your own God. You can, you can get a basket and put it somewhere in your house. And put Lizard eggs. Lizard, do they, do they lay eggs? Yeah. And put lizard eggs. And put a confirmed eggs. And put the feathers of a, a fowl. And cowries. And then you yourself, you can create your own God. And pour drink on it. Let me tell you, a demon will come and inhabit it. As a, an evil spirit will come in. And let me tell you something. But one of the mornings when you get up, you can see that the basket has levitated. It's levitating. The, 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 the basket will be suspended. So when you see the basket levitating, quickly, you tell you that ah, the gods have answered. You begin to worship it. The gods have answered. It's because an evil spirit has entered into it. Because you created your own God. That's what the Bible said. Thou shalt not bow down. It's a demonic altar. Can you repair this? You don't repair it. What do you do? You pull it down. Pull it down means that throw it away. Whatever your grandmother has given to you and you are keeping.
keeping it in your things and there's a picture there is something it's an object of comfort that is why it is not every artifact or every painting you should bring to your house the paintings you buy must be inspirational paintings they are sanctified paintings. They are paintings that speaks about the glory of God, the presence of God, and something. But don't go and, uh, and buy some caricature painting. Don't go and buy a painting with an African woman with the big bottles, big breasts, and then you put it in front of your bedroom. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? You are inviting last. You are inviting the spirit of lust. Uh, that image can be entered into by a demon of lust. You can be standing in front of it and you can be masturbating. It's demonic. A painting becomes a point of contact, an image. Something that has cap captivated your mind. Cap captivated your heart. And all of us have certain spirits, gods, many, many altars that are lingering around us and our, our hopes. <laughs> Today, as we end the series on altar versus altar, pull it down. Tell somebody, pull it down. Pull it down. Bring it down. Don't repair it. Don't repair it. Pull it down. Remove it. Take it away. Some of you are wearing beads. They are wearing beads. Tear the beads. You say, I don't know what beads does. They say, it brings shape. It brings dim. I don't know. But is it spiritual? Is it enhancing your spirituality? Whatever. Grandmother's beads. And found some and and soap. And anything that they give you instructions, be very careful. Yeah, be careful with it that I give it to you by instructions. Say amen. amen. Some of our mothers and grandmothers, they give us things. And I saw semina way there. Semina way there. And I walk And I walk on warrior. Now they jarry. I feel ukuruwa. Now why you And so many things. Pray over it all before you are using that soap. Pray over it. Pray over it. If you don't feel right about it, throw away that soap. Go and buy live boil, <laughs> uh, Rexona, Lux, uh, uh, da. Yeah, there are so many soaps that they don't even know you. They are producing mass. But the one that is tailored for you, that somebody gives it to you particularly to use at a particular day. At a particular moment, at a certain time, it's an altar. It's what? An altar. It's a demonic altar. Pull it down. Pull it down. Don't repair it. Don't repair. You don't need it. Listen to me, my people. You cannot add to God. God is God all by himself. And you must not compare God to your village gods. No. Just because you see, you see, some of our villages, eh, they fry meat on paper without fire. It will shake you. They cut seven pieces of meat and put on the paper. Then they repeat certain ways, repeat certain ways, they repeat certain ways. And then you hear, shh. You see the meat frying without oil and fire. It will make, it will, it will, it will make you believe in them at once. He's like, he like Simon the sorcerer. He was performing wonders, but was it of God? So it doesn't it, it mean that it is not anything strange you see that is of God. It's magic. 
It's demonic. It's spirits that have entered into it. Images, objects, uh, how do you call it? Rods, carries, coins, old coins, like the Nkuma coins. When you see when you see you know, in, 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 in African tradition, anything that will give you money, we are for it. The way we have suffered, anything that will give us money, we are for it. Anything we are for it. And then, those of us who worship God in our churches, but on weekdays, there is a woman somewhere that you go and see, that before you enter, eh, you have to remove your sandals. You have to step on something. And then, when you enter, you have to take one CD note plus a coin and put it under the feet of the woman. And the woman is sitting somewhere shaking her head. And prophesy, and guess what? He will give you a prophecy that is true. Yeah. Yeah. And last week, Tuesday, no nanga kayabo. It is true that kayabo, kayabo. Yeah, he will prophesy and give you an incident that is true. It is demonical. It's a it's a familiar spirit. That is why when you lose a relative, they say they saw him at Kaneshi. They saw your, you saw your mother at Kaneshi. Your mother didn't appear at Galatia. And some of us believe in those things. He appeared. He said he appeared. He, he was here. He was in Atabraka. He was buying oranges and drinking oranges. He, he went to his favorite watch seller. It was, it was, it, it, it's like me, I've died. And then you see me at the watch joint. You believe me because I love watching. So you see me at the watch, watch, watch joint. <laughs> yeah. So these are familiar spirits appearing on the rooftop of your house giving instructions. It is appointed unto every man once to die. After death is judgment. You can appear at your Bokari Sera. Appear. Just come. They are there. They hear somebody walking on the rooftop of the house. Papa, I best try, I best try, I best try. Woman in Sodom, woman in Sodom, woman in Sodom, then they go and pour water. Woman in Sodom, and a woman, 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 the person who is dead is not eating. It's demonic. It's demonic. And you must pull down that altar. You want to do something for God, do it now. I know some of you don't believe what I'm saying. You still believe in all these images, whatever, and the familiar spirit have taken over you. You know, in my, in my village, when somebody dies, they don't bury the person. No, no, no they put the person down. They must know who, <laughs> who killed. And then they will take water with leaves. And hell, they will carry some water with some leaves and things. And then at the funeral, they will sprinkle it. They will sprinkle it. And then one person will just... And then you get up. You leave my funeral. Leave my funeral. Go. <laughs> you, you are owing me. Seven hundred cities. You have been paid. Pay now. <laughs> then this woman will take over the funeral. And then people will come and hold the toes of the dead person. If you are owing, you have been paid. You have to come and hold the toe. And promise to pay. Sometimes they can carry the dead body. They are going to bury the dead bodies. Ah, and before you realize, they are, they, they are going back. <laughs> it means that they, there are unfinished beings. My people, all these things are demonic. All these things, holy toes, you owe me, they are all demonically inspired. So, and then they talk to the dead body. Who killed you? Who killed you? Do you have any money anywhere? Do you have any money anywhere? Do you have whatever? Who killed you? Whatever. 
And guess what? Those things, the revelation that will come out, they are true. They, they, they really can't be because they are precipitated by familiar spirits. Spirits that are familiar with your family. And our Christian brothers and sisters, some of them are involved in these things. And they say things like, how old is your pastor? How old is your pastor? These rituals, they were there before your pastor was born. You should pass that down coming to tell us what is right and what is wrong. The fact that something has been there for a long time doesn't make it right. The fact that a practice has been going on for centuries does not make it right. You are a child of God. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Say, I hear you, my pastor. One of the new altars you must build. And this morning, we are going to be praying to pull down old altars. Everybody knows the altar he must pull down. Everybody here has an altar he or she must pull down. Say amen. We have to look through and see a friend took you somewhere or whatever. That is why we have what we call midnight cry. In the midnight cry, we deal with massive deliverance cases. We cannot do some of the deliverance here because people will look at you some way. But at the midnight, there is no cam- there are no cameras. There are no online. People are saying, remember, put your midnight cry online. No, for you to be drinking orange juice and be watching me from your bed. No. <laughs> No cameras here. No online. Say amen. amen. One, of my, one of my members, who is very, 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 you know, very, 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 very strong, came to the midnight cry. And we laid our hands on him. He was shocked. He was shocked at him. He was, he was manifesting and he was shocked at himself. <laughs> he was rolling and he was shocked at himself. I said, Reverend, what is happening to you? I said, there are demons in you. <laughs> when they cast him out, then he, he ran out of the building. They go and chase him and bring him back. He was falling all over the place. Nobody was touching him. He himself was standing there, falling all over the place. Meanwhile, he's a very nice, respected gentleman. Respected, whatever. But there are demons at work in you. I said, why did you come to the midnight cry? He said, Daddy, he said, the things happening to me, I know there are demons behind it. That's why I came for the midnight cry. So there are some of you here, you are wearing a nice lace, Gucci perfume, <laughs> nice bag, but there are demons harassing your life. Yeah? You have covered it with a, a nice hair, a wig, makeup, hello, 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 Meanwhile, you are suffering. It says, it says, me what demons come to sleep with you in the night. Something is scratching your face. Before you wake up in the morning, you can see that your face has been scratched. Something is scratching your back. You are having demonic, demonic harassments. Am I going to call you and cast the demon out of you on Sunday morning when the whole world is watching you? For your sister in Chicago to say, hey, me will say, yeah, cast that demon. Hey, that's not who are demons. I know. So come to midnight cry. Wear trousers and come. Put your wig somewhere because your wig can fall off. The way you manifest, your wig can fall off. So come with your corn roll like that. And come, let's lay hands on you. And cast out those demons out of you. And stop that rough there. That's the reason why you're not married. You're already married in the spirit. Something has married you. Anytime you have a dream, you are in the wedding procession. And the face of the man is like a face of a horse. And they are wearing rings for you. As you are there, you are wearing a ring. And sleeping with you. And you are having orgasm in your sleep. It's a demonic contact. 
And you wake up in the morning and you don't know what is going on. But on Sunday, you polish beautifully and come to church. And nobody can read your makeup. That behind the makeup, you are suffering. And you would rather go to Manfin somewhere and go and meet some woman be there. And tell your woman your problem because you can't come and tell the pastors your problems. Eh, because I tell pastor, I want you to pastor to me preaching. Now, man, for when preacher, I better than say more now. Now, say more examples than man here. Then, man, bold. Now, so be the way you and fat on. Say the way you to bless all. Man, bold. Obia, any more. But come on. Yet why example? Celebrate. <laughs> Others will also benefit from your from your story. One woman came to me and had a problem with the husband, and she said, "Reverend, use my example to preach. I'm permitting you use it." Okay. Yeah, she said, I want, "I want people to know what I'm what what something happened to me." I said, "Okay, at the right time, it will come." I haven't still used the example yet. The example is not planned. No. When you are preaching, you're not a dumb. My body. It's by inspiration. I don't leave my house particularly coming to preach with you. Coming to preach you. No, 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 no. It pops up. Me, if you look at my notes, it's only scriptures, scriptures. The rest is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Say amen. So Humble yourself. You are having problems. Come to midnight cry. Your pastors are here. You are not. When people work with you for your son, they don't. They, 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 you, have, you have been done by 17 men. It's not normal. It means that there is, you are wearing a mask. Something is fighting your marriage. Something is fighting your, your, your whatever. You are now 39 years. No husband, no child. He said, it must be some, it, you, it must concern you. Yeah. You should be worried. Yeah. It's cause for worry. One of my, one of my sons brought a certain respectable woman to our midnight crime. When she, when the woman came, she was very, very, you know, she always come to this church, but she was very you know, diplomatic, diplomatic. Yeah, young Kavi, your worship is ah. And I uba a midnight cry now. Ah, you're boring, I cry because three hours of non-stop prayers. Uba bumpies ah, kaya, 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 kaya. Uba when you come for midnight cry, there is no usher, there is no protocol, there is nobody to usher you to go and sit down. There is nobody to tell you to pray. There is no, there is no topic. Just enter and pray and deal with the problem. You see people lying all over the altar. Some are here, some are there, some are upstairs. Everybody's praying. Oh, I don't want any problems. And then after three hours, there is a small worship by Stanley. After Stanley's worship, the Reverend Steve takes the microphone. Then we start praying for people. You should come and see. Manifestations, demons leaving people, people shaking. <laughs> he said, "Daddy, why, why am I shaking?" I said, "Yeah, demons are in you." <laughs> About them, spirits, witchcraft. No cameras. It's not online. It's us here. And everybody who comes to me that cry doesn't come to enjoy the weather. You have come to engage God. To engage God. This sort of Sunday, Sunday morning, however, by Bondi, worship, cry, wake, cry, wake, cry, me preaching more than 45 minutes. Be like, uh, he wants to go home, going to eat a How can you be delivered? How can you be delivered? Come to the midnight cry. And be prayed for. First of all, you yourself will pray. 
and they be prayed for and prayed over that those spirits that are torturing, harassing you, you know, you see, you can be a very big man, but you are suffering in silence. Pull down. There, there are demonic authors fighting. There's something about the devil. When he's manifesting himself, you manifest it to your advantage so that you believe in it. And then afterwards, you see the same altar fighting you. Same altar fighting. The Bible says, I like that scripture, he cometh not to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the trajectory where you are on, it leads to destruction. It leads to death. There is a way that seemed right unto a man. If you are on that path and you don't turn around, it will lead you to destruction. That is why you can be in a big church and still die of demonic attacks. You can be in a big church. Jesus went into a synagogue and demons cried out. Now, the priest was there. The Levites were there. Jesus entered. The demons didn't cry out from outside. They cried from within. The there are people in the church who are possessed. Possessed. With demons. Am I in church? I'm going somewhere. I'm preaching to my own members. There are people in our church, big men, big women, important people, who are suffering in silence. But after the service, you should see them. Hello, 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 hello. So you came, you came to church, enjoyed the service, but that thing didn't leave you. Unless you give it attention. Proper attention. I am coming this week to the midnight. Crowd. I want to pray three hours that this altar that has been fighting me be pulled down. Afterwards, when they make the altar call, then you come forward. And they lay hands on you. And when you are coming for you, go, go, go. Come with your hands raised. Era di Jimmy O. Sawan Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy Era di Buame Buame Era di Yesue. Me ya wumboa. Say, say, de me ya wumboa. Buame O. Buame Buame Era di Yesue. Me ya so you are standing you can be standing for 30 minutes because they are casting down some demons out of people when they get to your turn they will touch your forehead with the oil when they touch it <laughs> you yourself will be surprised at yourself because the environment has been charged with power and prayer to deal with the problems that is fighting you. Your marriage is collapsing. Your finances are collapsing. Your whole life is sinking. Take nine years you can marry. 41 years you are still single. Your business is going down. Your finances are going down. Your marriage is tearing apart. And you don't know that it's an attack on your life. It's an altar somewhere fighting you. Your own sister can be fighting you in the spirit. And you are a spiritual lilliput. You are a dwarf in the spirit. So the enchantments are working. Things are working. They are fighting you. Your family members have carried your effigy to a village. Fighting your destiny. 
A certain altar they have re- re- erected in the village is fighting your wife. Fighting your husband. Because your husband spent too much money on you. And your sisters are jealous that you have gone to bring a woman from a certain town and brought them. And this woman, you are spending money on her. You are taking it to Accra, Paris, Accra, London, Accra, New York. And they are in the village. Eh? Accra, London. Accra, Paris. We shall see. Accra, Dubai. One day, somebody took an effigy of his own sister. I told that story. Hang it in. They, they gave the sister a knife. He said, Oh, sister, I'm not here. I said, Oh, sister, I'm not here. I said, Then I'll pass it. Boo, 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 the sister, the old, from one mother, one father, jealous, cut that portion of the of the handkerchief. The sister was in that cry here. Mm. That was it. She was paralyzed. She never walked again. No one she's in the church. But spiritually low. You are low in the spirit. Ah, no, my level. Your level is low. Raise your level through prayer, fasting, word, and, and holiness. Because somebody is not happy that you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, you are a businessman, you are going Accra, London, Accra. Hey, you think everybody is happy with you? So raise your level. Once in a while, come and spend three hours or do a personal all night in your house. The piano, oh, so for baby, the part one and two. Are watching movies. Meanwhile, people who are fighting you are busy. They want a transfer of honor and wealth to them. Repair your, not repair, break down that altar. Your financial, your finances are bad. They be out, they can't, they be out, yes, you can Repair it today. Not only repair. Break down poverty order. Is poverty is a demonic order. Pull it down. So amen. amen. Engage yourself in spiritual things, in prayer, and in word. So amen. amen. And sacrifice upon it. Raise your commitment level. Raise your service to God. Build a new altar and commit yourself to the things of God. Build a new altar and commit yourself. Some of you have abandoned your departments. Your intercessory department, your protocol department, you have abandoned God's work. And what are you serving? What are you serving? Some of us, your work has become your altar. You'd rather go to work than come to church. Committed to your work. Be committed to God. Say amen. Build it. Your finances. Your finances. Build a new altar. Tight. You don't give tight. You don't, you don't pay. This whole year, you haven't even given a real 10% of your income to the, to the work of God. You, you just come and then tip God. You tip God. You tip God. You, tip, you have tipped. Uh, God is tired of your tips. God is tired of your tips. Baby, be mom. The queer, baby, be mom. I saw for them say, preach up, we preach in a way, yes, baby, be mom. Yeah. You should prosper and come to us and say, Reverend, I hear that you are owing on the church. How much is left? Pay all of it. Come to the church. What, 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 what do you need, guys? Pay all. Be 
prosper. Build a new financial order. Pull down the spirit of poverty and build a new financial order and do things for God. Do things for God. One gentleman walked to me uh, 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 last Sunday. He said, Reverend, Reverend, uh, I see that you are trying to cast that floor. I said, yeah. How many cement bags do you need to cast? I'll pay for all of it. Yeah. Yeah, pay for all of it. I'll pay for, the, I'll pay for all the cement that is left. May ten people come forward and pay things for the, for, 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 for the church. Build a new financial order. Bring in your tithe. Bring in your offering. Bring in your first food. Commit yourself. As we are here now, only 20 to 30% are bringing their tithes today. The rest are going to tip God. The rest are going to tip God. Tipping God means looking into your pocket and find something for the Lord. But what is the tenth of your income? What is, the, what is your covenant 10%? What is your commitment to God? What is the vow you have made to God? Repent, not, not repent. Build a new altar. Build a new financial altar. That you become a kingdom financier and a kingdom millionaire and a kingdom billionaire. Amen. Do you believe in the preaching of your pastor? You can become a billionaire in this house. Amen. If you build a new financial altar. Anytime you are coming to a Thanksgiving and tithe and offering, you, you yourself, you can tell that the tithe you are bringing in is not true. It's not true. We'll be tipping yami. 550 cities be found. Meanwhile, your tithe is 500. Your tithe is 1,500. Your tithe is 2,000. Tight on your income and tight on your company too. The profit your company make, tight on it. Okay. And build a new financial order. Right. And prosper genuinely. And God will help you. Say amen. amen. You see, people don't know why you're always broke. It's because, you, you see, God has redrawn his financial blessings from you. Because you are not honoring God with your substance. You are not honoring God with your tithe. You are not honoring God with your first fruits. You're not giving to God. So your financial altar is broken. You are rather giving Listen to it. You are rather giving all your money to your girl. There is a girlfriend be somewhere who is collecting all our tithe has gone to your girlfriend. Our tithe that we must use to work for the Lord has gone to your girlfriend. That is an altar. It's a demonic altar. Pull it down and bring the money back to the church. You are a beautiful lady. All your money is going to that boy who is not working. The boy is not working. The boy is always wearing his trousers on his bum. He's a babe. 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 Otofista. Babe. Uh, last week you gave me a thousand, but it didn't reach anywhere. This week, can you increase it? So by increasing it, you have, you have taken the money from our tithe. And give it to that boy who is not working. It's not working. Nimotium can can can. Nipioto on horo. And one say, Oh, Jusica, Edia called my girl for fro. Into one is a way a tray. And I want a wheel, Juma, I want a wusica, no abba. Babe, you know I love you. Babe, you know that you are the only one and the only. Babe, oh my God. When I don't hear your voice, I can't sleep. Oh, babe, you are. Mm -mm -mm. So, how to collect your money? And you too, your head is spinning. So when will you rise up? When will you rise up? When will you know that this guy is a deceiver? You have taken God's money and given it to that boy. Pay and pay with interest. May God help us all. God bless you. I love you.